It's nice meeting you all. Nice to meet you too. Um, I've always wondered, what do you do when you're in the when you're in the helmet and your nose itches or you get an eyelash in your eyes? Does that ever happen and how do you deal with it? Well, um, actually we have a couple of little instruments inside of our helmet. We have a Bell Salvo pad where you can uh, you can put your nose on there to clear your ears and you can push against there to uh, to uh, Bell Salva. And so that that little is a little piece of foam that sticks out from your visor by about an inch or so. And you can move your face over there? Yes, you can move your face over there and scratch your nose. <laughs> and uh, you also have a drink bag with a straw that has a bite valve on it. And you can get really, really handy with that straw as well. So if your nose itches, you can kind of scooch down on your suit and just kind of rub your nose with your straw. No, you know the last thing when you put your face on, the last thing you want to do before they put the helmet on? Is scratch. It's itch. This way you have to get out of the way. 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 Like this, so you have to try to read what it says on your on your suit. It'd be tough. You can't really pick. So we have a mirror that we wear on our wrist, and we hold it up, and the mirror shows everything backwards. Yeah. yeah. You know what? So so now you can read it very easily. That's really cool. Very clever. Yeah. That's <laughs> Okay, back here over on your left in the back. Uh, I'm Robert Stone. I wonder, could you explain what the first 90 seconds are like? What? We're watching you from out here. What's actually going on in your minds, and what are you actually doing? Yeah, really good question. Oh, yeah, take it well, some time. Okay, uh, well, you're, you're sitting on the pad for about uh, three hours, and so you're ready to go, and you can actually see out the front windows, and so when a little cloud passes over, uh, you kind of go, oh, and then a cloud passes, and you're like, all right, you know, the sun's back out. And um, so the first 90 seconds, See, well, at 6.6 six, uh, six seconds before the shuttle leaves the pad, the shuttle main engine is light. And so we've got a lot of thrust back there. It's about 1.12 million pounds of thrust, about 39 million horsepower behind you. And that's just for steering, essentially. And so uh, so that kind of rocks the shuttle a little bit forward, and, you, and you, you come back to vertical, and then the solids ignite. And it's like somebody just puts their foot in the middle of your back and just kicks you. Uh, yes, exactly like that. Yes. Does it get really warming when, when you go really fast? Does it what? Warming, warming. Warming, yeah, it shakes. Yeah. It shakes. Yeah. It's like you get on the motorcycle. Kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like, like that, or maybe uh, you're probably too young to go on a roller coaster yet. Or maybe you've some of the little rides yeah, over at Coney Island or yeah. something. So, so yes, it's kind of like that. It's like shaky and it goes really fast. And I felt like I knew very quickly that I was going faster than I ever did before. It was really, really fast. And I felt like after just a couple seconds, I realized that I was further from home than I ever was. Yeah. But you know what's cool about it is you have your friends with you. So it's not that scary. But, but you're going really good. Yeah, that's exactly what, that's exactly what I was saying. Yes. 
Yes, and what Mike had mentioned uh, earlier that it's important to work as a team. And if, you do, if you've been inside of the space shuttle, you see all the switches and circuit breakers and things in there. And if you notice that the things on the left side are totally different systems than are on the right side. Yeah. So you need to work together as a team. That's cool. Did you touch yeah. anything? Ah. You know, did you touch anything? Ah, did not touch no. anything. <laughs> Very good. One more question for Elmo. Uh, your, yes. far, your far right shuttle? Yes. Far right? Far right. 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 Yes. Yeah. Hi, Elmo. I'm Kim. How are you? Nice to meet you. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are My nieces and nephews will see this. I know there's a lot of school between your age and being an astronaut. So yeah. I wonder what the astronauts like to study in school and what you like to study. Well, I was at this school. Do you do anything in daycare? Uh, 
there's nothing like it. The, the rush of acceleration and velocity, the power that's taking you to orbit is uh, really indescribable. I don't know if this point is much different. But the Soyuz is actually a lot smoother. You know, this, this, the shuttle is much different than the Soyuz. Mm. And um, the shuttle on ascent, I felt was pretty violent with the way of vibration and stuff. In first stage, uh, we, you know, we all carry knee boards with our pens and everything down there. And in first stage, uh, I don't think you can write anything on a knee board. You're, uh, the vibration is so bad. But we, we had a pretty uh, clean, we had a, had no malfunctions on our launch. I flew on Discovery and STS-120. And um, we had a very clean launch. And uh, But I would just do kind of a reach uh, check to make sure that, that I could reach switches that I would need to, to, to throw, you know. So, and as your hand, you're kind of trying to guide your hand into a switch, you know. So, so it's kind of a course corrections on the, uh, in first stage. So it's, it's, a, it's a little uh, little rocky in first stage. And the Soyuz, you're sitting on a pretty much the center line thrust, and so it's just, kick in the pants and it's pretty smooth. You probably have seen uh, during Ascent, the Ascent video inside the Soyuz is very, very tame. It's real smooth. Uh, you can hear uh, things behind, you can feel the staging and everything. Now, coming home, exact opposite. Coming home in the shuttle is, uh, is pretty smooth. You have a little bit of a lateral vibration as you start the impact the top part of the atmosphere. But coming home in the Soyuz is like uh, getting inside of a barrel to go over Niagara Falls. And before you go over, they light it on fire. How has preparing to go on these missions and actually going into space helped you understand the mitigating risk in your life, both professionally and personally? I think, you know, the, the emphasis on safety and being careful is uh, probably the most important thing we, uh, we do when we prepare. Um, I still do stupid things around the house, if that's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, know, you try, you try to be as, as careful as you can. Particularly when you're assigned to a flight, you want to try to be really careful. You don't want to get hurt or get sick or anything like that. So I think, you know, being uh, for me, uh, being a civilian, I'm not a military uh, person. I was not a test pilot. So a lot of this was new to me when I came to NASA. Um, I always tried to be safe, but uh, how important safety was. Uh, became a really big part of my life once I became an astronaut. And yeah, I think actually, it's an interesting question, but I think it has made me uh, think more about how to prevent problems. You know, you just fly in our airplanes. Before you fly, we breathe and we think about what happens if this happens, what happens if that happens. And, you know, you do that so much in your professional life, but what we do every, every day has, not every day, but a lot of what we do on a daily basis has I don't want to risk to it. I think it has carried over for me in my personal life. It's got to be more cautious and think ahead about it. No, I, I, I'd like to echo again what Mike said earlier about the really importance of teamwork. Because you, uh, you know, especially when we had that pump module fail. You know, it's funny, I was on 120 when we had the solar array tear. And so uh, Scott Brzezinski and I went outside and we uh, buttoned up that solar array. And then, and then last summer we had the pump module failure. and I talked to Mike Separdini, the uh, station program manager, and I said, okay, two major failures, two trips, so I guess this is my last time to the station. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, but the, you know, the importance of teamwork, it was amazing uh, to see all that unfold because, you know, Mike's been to Hubble, and uh, so he's got some very, very unique uh, uh, challenges on, on the Hubble telescope that I haven't experienced. But, but being in, in the space, on the space station, doing these emergency space walks and watching how far everyone is working on the ground and all of our international partners. It's a display of teamwork that I have never experienced before. I'm still active in the military and uh, you know, I've been in this that line of work for several years now, but I've never seen teamwork uh, like I had experienced last summer with that uh, pump module repair. So it's a, to me, and on top of the teamwork, uh, probably the second most important skill is, is a is this, uh, the skill of problem solving that I try to tell everybody. And that's sort of a mindset, you know, that we have that, uh, we, you know, we look at problems different ways, you know, we can, we can attack them head on, or we can turn and run away, or we can stand frozen in fear. And so so it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a very, very important skill to have, and we draw on each other. It's, it's not a lone ranger.